Well, revisiting our top story tonight, we are taking a closer look at the decision not to charge two police officers in the shooting death of Thurman Blevins. We wanted to explore how people can see the same body camera video from officers and hear the same set of facts and have such different reactions. And to help us sort through this is Michelle Phelps, a sociology professor with the U of M. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, these are such divided times in so many ways. And I think moments like this, um, the decision that was made today about uh, the, whether or not the officers will be charged and the circumstances leading up to it really show us how very divided we can be. And I want to speak to the story we did at the top of the newscast, which was of the, the press conference today being interrupted and uh, activists and members of Thurman Blevins' family saying that this was murder. I know a large chunk of our audience was watching that saying, how can you think that? He was armed. He was turning toward the officers. And obviously there's a chunk of the population that says, how can you keep murdering black men in the street? How can we possibly have such different versions in our own minds of what the truth is? Yeah, in many ways, I think this video is sort of a Rorschach test for how you feel about the police in general and the um, social issue of the disproportionate police killings of young men of color. You know, when I look at that video, the things that stand out to me that I think are um, contrary to the narrative of this being sort of ideal police practices, as we heard from um, the Federation chief, Bob Kroll, right, that this is sort of gold star policing. I think the things that stood out to me are first, that very first moment. So what you hear on a lot of the activists saying is why was in the very first moment the police jumping out with their guns drawn, especially with a child present, right? There, in many ways that initiates the chase. Um, I think instead of a dangerous armed man, which is I think what the police officers saw and what probably a lot of the audience may see, I think what a lot of the community sees was a scared man, right? A man mm -hmm. who was afraid of the police and afraid of what might happen to him if he was caught. And I think they, that people respond really differently to the language that was used in the video. You know, knowing police officers um, to the degree that I do, right? what I hear that officer saying is, please don't make me shoot you. But those are not actually the words coming out of his mouth, right? The mm -hmm. words coming out of his mouth are, I will shoot you. I have to play devil's advocate uh, mm -hmm. because I know this is what people are going to be saying to me on social media. Maybe the reason they jumped out so quickly is because the 911 call said he was already firing and he was intoxicated and they saw the gun. So if, if we have, we've all seen the same set of facts. I mean, is there any hope for us coming together on this issue? How do we... Because I also do feel that people on one side don't want to hear anything from the other side and vice versa. Everybody's guilty of believing their own truth and not wanting to listen to anybody else. Yeah, so I think it's really tricky. I think the if I'm being an optimist, what I um, am heartened by is that we can have a conversation about what do we as a society think is the appropriate use of force mm -hmm. for police officers to employ, right? There's um, there seems to be very little question if you watch the video that there was in fact a gun, right? That was a question mark before the mm -hmm. video came out. The video seems fairly definitive on that point that there was a gun. There's still some ambiguity I think about um, given the quality of the photo uh, or the video of sort of when the gun was angled towards the officers and mm -hmm. at what point was a shot fired if so. Um, but I think fundamentally, right, we task police officers with responding to these kinds of situations. We want police officers to um, control situations where you have, for instance, a man who's drunk and armed. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we have a right to be armed, right, and that shouldn't make us immediately mm -hmm. the um, target of police officers. And so I think it's part of a broader conversation about how we want police officers to act in our name. Right, right. Well, we could talk for the next hour. We really appreciate you coming in. Thanks so much for joining us, Professor. Thank you for having me. We'll talk me. again, I have a feeling, in the near future.